Drake, thank you for joining me today. Locked on Big 12. We appreciate you for your time. Is Utah your favorite to win the Big 12 this year? I love Kansas. I love Kansas. And people will balk at that. They got five votes in the Big 12 preseason poll to win the conference. Utah got 20 votes. I understand why Utah is number one. The only thing, the only real qualm that I have with the Utah team that returns so much, Cam Rising is coming back. A lot of people are asking the question if Cam Rising is going to be at full strength. Is he going to be as good as he was? Can he bring back with Brent Keithy this, this dynamic offense? And the way that I see it for Utah, the answer is yes, he very well could. I don't have too many questions around in Cam Rising, but I love the consistency of what the Big 12 returns from a Kansas to a Kansas State to an Oklahoma State and even a West Virginia. For Utah, you walk into a brand new conference that plays football in a bit of a different way. The Pac-12 is less physical than what the Big 12 on the whole is going to give you. I get it. You could argue that Oregon is more physical than even maybe a Kansas. However, Kansas brings a whole lot more to the table than Arizona State did. The depth of the Big 12 is going to catch up to somebody. And Kyle Whittingham is famous for even in years where he wins the Pac-12, he still has three losses, two losses. He loses a couple of games into the Big 12, but that doesn't go the right way for you. Um, He's not going to go undefeated. If it doesn't go the right way for you, you miss a chance at Arlington and somebody else is there. Kansas with a whole lot of Lance Leipold under their belt and one of the most dynamic offenses and two of the best DBs in the conference brings a lot to the table. I don't think Utah is my favorite, though they they are certainly, I, I would say, I would almost say objectively top three in this league. Um, Utah got a pretty big update on their future with uh, uh, head coach in waiting being named. We talked about this on your show. I'll link that down in the description. But uh, you asked me my thoughts. What do you think about this? Um uh, new uh new update for utah's future yeah you know scally's been there 17 years um the very interesting aspect of this is you know it comes out that he uses this racial slur because he was already the head coach in waiting this was years ago and then about uh four or five years ago they decided oh wait a second we're gonna keep him on staff we're gonna dock his pay we're gonna no longer leave him the head coach in waiting and then and we give it time we're like oh you know what just kidding again fine he can be the head coach it's so interesting how the timeline worked with this but What you're doing is John Shire at Duke. You're saying, this is our guy who we know that you've worked under the head coach. We like this culture. We like the way things have gone. We're going to make you the head coach in waiting. It's a weird optic. I feel like it's a weird time. Hello, welcome to July. We're about to gear up for the next college football season to say, hey, you're you fine. You can be the head coach after Kyle Whittingham. To me, it shows that we are getting close. Within the next three years, Kyle Whittingham's done. I'm calling it. I'll call right now with with this decision when it came. Kyle Whittingham, who is going to be pushing 70 at that time, is done in the next three years. NIL to the transfer portal to now this private equity stake in the Big 12. And you already knew that he didn't exactly love the move to the Big 12. There are a lot of ins and outs to why Whittingham in and reasons that like a Nick Saban is retiring will hang it up in the next couple of years. The day is coming where Scally's the head coach at Utah. I don't think we're that far off. Um. You mentioned Cam Rising and him coming back. He obviously missed the entire year last year. There seem to be rumors that he might even play in that opener against Florida. Being yeah. in, in, no in the kidding, state of Florida, huh? it was like unannounced until really like two days before. I, and then he didn't end up playing. <laughs> so I yep. don't know. You know, great, great, uh, great smoke screen there for for Utah, who actually played their third string in that game. Um, but. Are are you confident that he is fully ready to go, or or do you think that there yeah. the the hype around Utah seems to be a lot riding on just him? And is there a chance that that doesn't go the way we're all thinking it will? I I'm very confident in Cam Rising. There are other analysts who I respect that are leaving a bit of leeway before they give full judgment on where Rising is supposed to be this next year. To me. For his age, I mean, the guy can rent a car without extra fees. Like for his age and experience in college football, he is he is going to have to <laughs> he's going to have to give you something that replicates what he did in 2022 when he threw for 3,000 yards and 26 touchdowns and was right up there with the best in college football while running for 500 yards. That is the Cam Rising that I think we're going to get this upcoming football season of the Big 12. I fully expect the same kid who led Utah to back-to-back Pac-12 championship victories will walk into the Big 12 and succeed. I get it. He missed a year due to injury. We have seen countless times before major college quarterbacks or major college athletes, major pro athletes especially, who take a year off due to injury, they come back and they are themselves again. Cam Rising getting a complete year off and a complete year to heal 
to me, is going to be best for his longevity and create a very good recipe for the Utah offense in 2024. I have full confidence. I have no question. I, I right now do not have very many question marks about Cam Rising because when you listen to him talk, when you see what he did for two seasons at Utah, it's not this one-off, like, oh, he was good for a year. Can he, can he still be good? No. Rising proved twice how good he is, and with a year of rest under his belt, I think he's going to be just as solid. I want to get a bold for prediction from you on Utah. It can be anything you want, positive, negative. Uh, people will be less mean in your mentions if it's positive. <laughs> um, but before we do that, we'll tease them a little bit. Uh, where can people follow you? Where can they find your work? Where can they hear more? At LO Big 12 on Twitter, Locked On Big 12 is posted daily on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. TJ, are you ready? I'm ready for it. Buckle up, <laughs> folks. So bear with me a bit here. I'm going to give you, I, I know that typically your video is around the six to 10 minute mark. So I'm, you're going to have to give me a second to unpack this one. Southern <laughs> well, we Utah. Plenty, plenty of time. Plenty of time. Baylor, Utah State. Now the wild Utah State, Blake Anderson thing. Those three are all easy wins, especially that Baylor game. They're going to suck. Then it gets a little tough with Oklahoma State on the road and Arizona at home. But Utah doesn't lose at home. They're going to likely lose to Oklahoma State on the road. They'll beat Arizona. They'll win against Arizona State. They'll beat TCU. It's just not a hard schedule. When you have five games in a row against Colorado, BYU, Houston, TCU, and Arizona State, those aren't cream of the crop Big 12 teams. They were all picked below the top half of the conference. You're going to win all those games. Then the Iowa State game you play is also at home where Utah doesn't lose. They're going to win that one. Uh, I do think they actually lose at UCF at the end of the year, but at ten and two, their record works in their favor. The win loss thing, they beat out another ten and two team to go to Arlington. My hot take, my big Utah take, which is really not that hot because everybody's saying it. They will go to Arlington, uh, but the bad news is they will lose to Kansas when they get there. Utah in the Big Twelve Championship, it's happening, though they're not going to win it. I like it. I like it. Uh, quick follow up. You you can go as deep. Yeah, as you come want on. Or, or not? What are the prospects the Big Twelve gets two teams in this year? Oh, I like it a lot. I mm. like it a lot. Now it'll be hotter than your last take. Yeah, that the <laughs> I, I made a case six months ago. Like, hey, is there a way to get three in? There's a way to get three in, but it takes like three eleven and one teams, and yeah. that is or you know like an undefeated and two eleven and ones. That's going to be really tough to manufacture because the parity of the league. Um, because I could see a team, I could see reasonably, you know, somebody gets blown out by West Virginia, and then the next week beats Oklahoma State. You're like, oh, well, those are two of the top, you know, Big 12 teams. That's just the way it goes. The, that seven or eight schools are pretty even. Um, so the, the problem is you're going to eat yourself alive. That's that's the issue. What if a 9-3 and three team wins the Big 12? Yeah, they get in, but then the, the losing team's not going to. My my best case scenario here, TJ, is for a Utah 10-2. and two. They're playing undefeated or 11-1 and one Kansas. Utah wins that game, 11-2. and two. They're a lock-in. Kansas, the loser, is 12 and 1, 11 and 2. They get that 12, the 11th spot, I guess, because the group of five team. They get the 11th spot. I think the Big 12 sneaks two in, and you almost have to going into this new era of college football to prove that, hey, we're here to stay relevant. Yeah. I like it. I like it. And you're right. I think they do kind of get all. Fingers crossed. The lock, of course, the lock on Big 12 guy would say we get two in. Of course. <laughs> I, you're right about them candidalizing themselves. I, I think the league kind of does what oh, the. Yeah. Um, what the SEC claims to do every year this year. So, yeah. um, all right, cool. Drake, thank you for hanging out, man. I appreciate it. TJ, always a pleasure.